The principles of aerial photography are the same as those used in photographing objects on the ground. Using the standard 8x10 ground view camera as an example of these principles, we find that the camera in a simplified form consists of a light tight box, a lens, and a holder for the sensitized material. These holders have a dark slide which protects the film from the rays of light while the camera is being loaded. A shutter is placed on the front of the camera to regulate the speed at which the picture is taken. Finer lenses are composed of several elements with an iris diaphragm mounted between the elements to regulate the amount of light admitted to the film. The smaller the opening in the iris, the greater the depth of focus in the photograph. This iris and lens assembly is in turn mounted in a barrel mount to keep the elements in a fixed position relative to each other and to protect the delicate leaves of the shutter and iris diaphragm. Lenses of different focal lengths produce various sized images. The longer the focal length, the larger the picture. Owing to the great altitude at which most aerial photographs are made, haze must be considered. This aerial haze is composed of dust and water vapor held in suspension in the air. To assist in the elimination of this aerial haze, filters are mounted either in front of or behind the lens. These filters are composed of thin, colored gelatin sheets cemented between two optically flat pieces of glass. The sensitized material used in aerial cameras is either cut film used in the type B1 holder or roll film wound on a metal spool with the emulsion to the inside the hole enclosed in a light tight metal container. Four types of aerial cameras constitute the standard equipment for the Air Corps photographer. The nature of the mission determines the camera which must be used. The K3B camera serves the purpose of three units. Its lens equipment consists of eight and one quarter inch, 12 inch, and 24 inch lenses with the equivalent cones. This unit is capable of embracing any photographic mission. The K7C camera accommodates the longest focal length lens standard to aerial photography and is used primarily for high altitude verticals, but can also be used for high or low altitude obliques. The K-12 camera is used expressly for night photography. The T-3A camera is virtually five cameras built into a single unit. Its chief use is in the making of aerial maps. The A-8 camera mount is used in the airplane to mount the K-3B, the K-7C, and the K-12 cameras. Direct viewfinders are used to sight the cameras when oblique photographs are made. A timer is built into the body of each camera to aid in making the exposures at regular intervals. The camera should be thoroughly cleaned with the aid of an air blower, being careful to blow out all cracks and crevices around the mechanism inside the camera body. Particular care should be exercised in cleaning the lens. A soft, lintless cloth or paper lens tissue should be used for this purpose. To inspect the lens, remove the upper end of the trip shaft and turn the lower end clockwise until a definite stoppage point is reached. 
Next, turn the shaft counterclockwise. This action trips the shutter and leaves the lens open for inspection. By looking through the lens toward the light, the operator can readily determine if dust or dirt is present between the lens elements. In this event, the elements of the lens must be taken apart. In doing so, loosen the locking eccentric washer with a screwdriver and turn the eccentric washer to the open position, allowing the lens to be unscrewed. When the front and back portions of the lens have been removed, the several lens elements may be taken apart. After the lens has been thoroughly cleaned on the inside with a soft cloth or lens tissue, extreme care must be taken in replacing the elements to prevent cross-threading. These threads on the barrel mount are very fine and are easily damaged. To replace the lens, the winding shaft should be removed. Close the shutter leaves by turning the winder coupling counterclockwise. Make certain that the coupling is latched. Replace the wind and trip shaft, being careful not to turn the trip shaft. Use both hands in placing the trip shaft in engagement. Should the trip shaft be turned at the time of engagement, the shutter will open and the camera will be out of time. Wind and trip the camera several times to check the shutter operation. Place the loaded magazine on the camera. The side of the magazine opposite the latch must be inserted first. The magazine latch is actuated by a small handle built into the camera body. Turn the winding crank until the magazine drive is engaged. This engagement can be ascertained by noting the turning of the indicating knob on the right side of the K7C magazine. On the K3B magazine, the indicating knob is located on the left side of the magazine. And if the magazines are loaded in the dark room, the turning of the indicating knobs may be ascertained by feeling the ridges on the edge of the knob. In the event the camera is loaded in the daylight, the camera should be wound and tripped approximately 13 times to make certain the safety leader has been replaced by the film. <laughs> 